start reading between the lines in the Bible. <laughs> Try and find something. Jordan's messages. Sponsored by Squarespace. Guys, have you noticed that I've been trying a lot harder with my whiteboard? Bubble letters. Okay, I'm really hoping it pops out at you guys. Sure, I can't do bubble letters very well, so the and looks totally Oof. Short and toxic though. Let's figure out what that means. Uh, let's get to the messages. All right, Jordan, get ready for one of the most bizarre messages you've ever read. I'm scared. Dear Jordan and Josh, my husband and I have been married for three years now. Ever since our dating relationship, he would make comments about how he hates that we are the same height, both 5'5". Five five. I thought he would get over it, but three years later, he is not attracted to me because of my height. He thinks I'm too tall for him, and that sends him into a, plain, a pain cycle of thinking about divorce almost every day. <laughs> I've never been insecure about my height until now, since he frequently brings it up. I don't think that you're the one insecure about your height. I'm tired of feeling bad about something I can't control. Should I leave him? Is this toxic masculinity, <laughs> please? No, this is toxic emasculinity. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I think that that's the problem here. Toxic emasculinity. <laughs> uh, look, I don't know. This is. I wouldn't want to be with this guy. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing masculine. <laughs> no. about any of this. And she's blamed herself for everything. I think Kelly is right? like five four five. Four. Yeah. And I'm like 5'6", so I could I could almost be in this guy's <laughs> shoes. I always think, man, if I were any shorter than I am, I would really hate that. Anytime I see a guy who's just like even a little shorter than me, I think, ah, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Because like, I feel like I'm right on that line where I think about it, you know? So, so I, 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 I'm not tall, but I'm also not like short. So what do you think about this guy, Josh? Uh, do you, you, can, you can relate to him? No, some... I mean, I'm just saying... <laughs> I, he's this is terrible. Okay. He's but also I on some like animalistic level I I get without any filters why you might behave this way. <laughs> God, why is this woman you gave me? Why is she 5'5? Five five? She's too tall. It's it's a hard thing. I'm so short. Yeah, I don't think that it's that you're too tall and I don't think that it's that he is toxic masculinity. Uh, I, this is all backwards. This guy was just begging that God would give him like a like a four a four eleven. Four eleven. Like, oh, look how tall I am compared to this little pipsqueak. Look, the real question that she's asking is, should I get a, di a divorce? <laughs> and the answer is, I look. <laughs> I don't know. The Bible doesn't say anything about if he's too short, Josh, to get a divorce. You know, that's not in the Bible. I didn't read that in the red letters. <laughs> but what you can read, if you read between the lines, read between Josh, the lines, we love reading between the lines of the Bible. <laughs> this guy is constantly talking about how I'm going to divorce you because you are sending me into a pain cycle because you are too tall. Is, this, is he just like bringing this stuff up? Like, I, I don't know. I think I might divorce you because you're yeah. too tall. This is like the strangest thing. Like, I feel like she's been manipulated for so long that she wrote this completely straight. Yep. Like, this was this just sounds normal to her to talk I, about, but this is the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Well, he's just in a pain cycle. He might divorce me, he mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Because I'm too tall, I'm 5'5". Five five. Let me ask this question. This is the question that matters the most to me. Do you have children with this man? <laughs> Because this question is probably dramatically different. Uh, if you do or if you don't, just quite frankly, uh, if you don't, start reading between the lines in the Bible. Try and find something to, certainly, to get out. Certainly, <laughs> certainly he lost it in his heart. He at did some point. something he wrong. He looked at a woman twice. He did something. He, you could find something to get out of it. Okay. But if you have children with them, we're reading between the lines a little less. I like how Like, we're... Jesus has to say divorce the 5'5 five five man. Look, I choose not to say divorce this man wow. because I read some words on a page, one-sided. And I say this all the time. If I saw the two of you walk in here, open this door over here, and walked in and interrupted my amazing program, I would know in two seconds if you should divorce him or not. But I, I can't. And you could even see him. 
a, he might not. He, he might be behind her. He might be behind her. Yeah. <laughs> so I cannot say, give you an answer. I'm sorry. From just a few words on a page, I can't do it. I can't. I can't mess up some your future. Just like that. Well, 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 if you've visited BlindMeCow.com lately, you know that the site looks very, very different now. Go check it out. It's super easy to navigate with updated info about all the things that we're working on. Of course, our site has always been built with Squarespace, so picking a new template and updating everything only took a few hours once we finally decided to just do it. And the beginning of the year is a fantastic time to finally just sit down and say, you know what, it's time to make this website. So seriously, look at me right now, okay? It's time. You know you need a website, so why put it off? Squarespace makes it so easy with flexible website templates no matter what kind of site you want to create. Whether it's a blog, portfolio, web store, YouTube channel, or whatever else you want to display or promote. All the templates look great and you can customize them to do whatever you want. You can create an online store selling physical, digital, or service products easily. Plus, you can create custom merch with print on demand. It's insane, actually. They even handle shipping for you. So, what do you want to build? I want you to listen to me right now. Start this year. You can do it with Squarespace. It's time to finally build that website you've been putting off forever. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, go to our link squarespace.com slash cow because there you're going to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash cow. Now, Let's get back to the messages. Hi Jordan, my best friend and I have been friends for 13 plus years since middle school, and we are now in our early 20s. Since she moved out of her parents' house at 18, she has gone through cycles of getting into some non-messages land friendly substances and activities with guys. She goes in and out of this toxic lifestyle, which I, of course, discouraged slash do my best to stay out of. I know I can't change her. That is all up to her, but it is really hard to be friends with her when she is always getting caught up in problems of her own making. Am I a bad friend for wanting to end the relationship? Should I stay friends with her? Because technically these activities are none of my business and don't really affect me. I don't want to throw away 13 years of friendship, but it feels like she only stays close with me when it is convenient for her. She is back in her cycle again and is trying to hide it from me, but I know her pattern and I know what she's up to. I don't know what to do. You can say that something that somebody does doesn't affect you because you're not involved in it, but a person's essence intermixes with like, like she's a little bubble and your little bubble. Her essence intermingles with your essence in unfathomable ways, even if you don't, not a part of what she's doing. You know, she changes and you feel that change and you're interacting with somebody who is doing bad things constantly and you know, does that influence a person like you? Sure it does. I've been involved with people who are into bad things and you realize, wow, this, like I'm not doing anything. I'm trying to be encouraging to these to this person, but you can feel that it just like being around that 24 seven. You don't, cause you know, you read the Bible and it's like you're supposed to be, you know, loving and nice to people, Josh, which is a great thing. But from my experience, there's a point where it's like, we can be nice and loving, but at some point, it, those bubbles are intermingling maybe a little too much, and then you gotta you gotta figure out you gotta you gotta use your mind and differentiate what is too much interaction with this person. What does loving somebody really mean? And and I don't I can't tell you exactly how to do that. Because personally, I've learned to figure that out myself <laughs> in some instances. It's difficult because you don't want to come across as a wimp because it's like, look, I'm a strong I'm Christian. I'm a strong person. This person, whatever they're doing, isn't going to affect me. You, you don't want to be a wimp. But at the same time, you, you, we're all a little less strong than we think. And, <laughs> and, and it, it is a big, it's a big, uh, it's a it's a big influence that somebody else has on you, especially if they're your best friend, you're spending every waking minute. Just talking to somebody a lot 
who's into bad things, it, it, it there's something about it that is, you, you can't put a scientific definition on it because science isn't that evolved yet. But there's something real about it, I don't know. And so, yeah, you can still be nice and loving and, and, and but you can do that from a distance, still keep up with the person, you know, every few months, but you don't have to cut off the relationship completely. You know, you don't have to do that, but just distance yourself. And if they ask questions, just be honest with them. And look, you're into this stuff. And so, you know, I still want to be friends, but like, I, I don't want to be really around that constantly. So, uh, you know, I still care about you. I want the best for you, but that like to just be around this all the time is a little difficult. And if they leave after you said that, then so be it, they're gone. Okay. I feel like this was a therapy session for me, Josh. I gave myself a messy just land therapy session. How'd that feel? Fine. Now it didn't help much, but. <laughs> Guys, short and toxic is, n is a great way to describe the man in the first question, <laughs> but not a great way to describe this episode of messages. <laughs> it wasn't, it's not a good way. Don't be messy. And leave good messages. This outro was short though, <laughs> not toxic.